We welcome you to the Nissan pregame ship for the 97th Rose Bowl game in Pasadena. And the Horn Frogs, unbeaten in the regular season for the second consecutive year, come out behind coach Gary Patterson. This has been the Nissan pregame shift. Ready to go in Pasadena on a beautiful afternoon for football. 60 degrees here in Pasadena. You can see down at Fort Worth, home of TCU, 47 degrees. And in Madison, a little chilly 16. So I guess everybody's huddled around the TV sets and the fireplace in Madison, ready to go. Now the captains are out of midfield. Our crew is from the SEC, and we have an outstanding referee, Steve Shaw, who is about to become the head of officials. So let's go down now to Steve. The president of the Tournament of Roses. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, let me show you this coin we have today. One side has the Wisconsin logo. On the other side, TCU logo. We'll let the coin fall to the ground. The teams whose logo is up will win the toss. Now, we're honored today to have our Grand Marshal, Miss Paula Dean, tossing our coin. Paula, will you do us the honors? I would be delighted. Good luck, guys. I'm not used to flipping without my skillet, but I'm going to give it my best shot. <laughs> Good luck to all of y'all. And the toss is won by TCU. Uh, you're going to defer. Let me give you this coin back. Thank you, sir. They're deferred. It's your choice. All right, they're going to receive which goal you want to defend. All right, turn your backs here. Wisconsin over here. And down TCU below, won the toss. Aaron Andrews is standing by with Coach Gary Patterson. So let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks, Coach. Your defense leading the nation for the second straight year. Now you take on this offense with their accurate quarterback, their big line, and those powerful backs. Who do you attack first? Well, number one, you're not going to stop them. You got to control them. We got to tackle, play leverage, and uh, we can't allow the big run, and we, gotta, we can't allow the play action. So that's our goal today. Offense got to move the ball, score some points, and we got to try to contain them a little bit, and then they find a way to win by one more point. You're an emotional guy. What was the last message to your team before they ran out? Well, I'd been in a white pant, a, a khaki pant. I was in all black. Coach, we got here in khaki, so I went in and changed, baby. So here we go. Looking good. Thanks. Thank you. There, across the way on the far side, Brett Bielma, a player and a head coach in the Rose Bowl and so we're just about set to go the officiating crew takes its position so settle back everybody enjoy this gorgeous scene and we are ready to go with the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio And he returns it to the 31-yard line. And so here comes Scott Tulzine, the Badger quarterback. Very efficient. 
not glamorous but simply does not make the big mistake and that'll be such a big thing today just managing the game everybody thinks about Wisconsin and their big offensive line and their running game and that's a big part of it but today his ability to throw the football especially on early downs with a play action pass will be a big part of Wisconsin's attack Marty Ball will be the first running back out First carry for ball, huge hole, explodes, 40, 35, and across the 30-yard line before he is knocked down. Well, this is what everybody wanted to see, Wisconsin's offensive line. What a great combination block. Kevin Zeitler, number 70, gets up, gets up to the linebacker, and Wisconsin picks up where they left off at the end of the regular season with a big effort here by that big offensive line and Monty Ball. A 40-yard run to open the game on the first down. And no, they didn't go to the left side. <laughs> no. They came back to the right side. Absolutely. Now it's the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, James White, who is the running back. Before the play. Before the snap, false start, number one on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Nick Toon, wide receiver. Talked about the emotion in this football game for these football players, not only the long layoff, but the hype of this game for both teams. with the freshman bangs across the 30 yard line and Jason Teague the defensive back up to make the stop there are your backs and receivers and obviously we've already seen two of the three backs Nick Toon guilty of the infraction watch for number 84 Lance Kendricks and there is that offensive line Karimi and Moffat on the left Cones who scores very high with the coaches Zeitler and Wagner are on the right and Monty Ball now checks back in alongside Tolzien, who is back in the gun. His second carry bounces off a tackle, makes his way to the 20, and this is a manageable third down coming Yeah, up. it is, and considering they had the middle mistake there to get to first and 15, they come back with a couple runs and get to a manageable third down, which is exactly where Scott Tolzien needs to be. It's interesting. It's early in the game. But TCU just gave up their longest run that they've given up all year on the first play of this game. How do they respond here early in the game here on this first third down of the ball game? Double tight end. Third and two. Paul Christ has the play call from up above. From the power set. Another first down, and Monty Ball looking very efficient before Tanner Brock can bring him down. They've got nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage, and this is the block that we see a lot. Wisconsin brings their linemen around. It's about the second or third time that the first man there that's been there in position to make a tackle has not been able to secure the tackle, and Ball and White both have been able to extend the play for another three or four yards. Now, Ball is over 900 yards on the season with those two carries. Ewing is set in front of it. Here comes Ball. He is tripped up with a beautiful tackle by T.J. Johnson. His 38th start as a Horn Frog. He's out of Garland, Texas. He forced six turnovers this year, and he's a flat good one. Did you see how he got underneath the block of Kendricks? He beat Kendricks to the point of attack. We heard that all week from TCU. Here comes Kendricks. He goes right underneath it and still is able to not only avoid the block of Kendricks, who's one of the best blocking tight ends around, but also secures the tackle. That was a great play there by Johnson. White's turn. We have not seen John Clay. They keep it on the ground to the 13-yard line, and Jones, another of the defensive backs, coming up to make the stop. So this is an interesting third down here, Herbie. This could be Tolzien putting it up for the first time. 
It's an interesting play selection by Paul Chris to move this ball down the field. They've not attempted a pass yet. And Paul Chris, much like the Ohio State game that you and I had, they just rolled up their sleeves early in that game and tried to drive the ball down the field running. But now they're going to see if they can throw against his TCU defense and protect Tolzien. He will throw for the first time. Middle dropped two. Covered by Jason T. Andy Dalton getting ready. Well, Toon is healthy for the first time really since the beginning of the season. Battled through a turf toe injury. Also had a thigh bruise against Ohio State. He, I don't think he was just ready for the ball. Tolzien back there with his first throw. Makes a pretty accurate throw, but I don't think Nick Toon got his head around in time to be able to make that catch. So here comes Philip Welsh. He will attempt a 30-yard field goal. Badgers strike first. Welcome back to the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Wisconsin 3 and TCU about to receive the kickoff. And here is one of their more dangerous players, as Kirk Herbstreit pointed out in our opening. Jeremy Curling. He will try to give the Horned Frogs field position here, and it'll be interesting to see how the Badgers decide to kick against him. They bring it on from the right side. And Curley gets into a gap and out to the 22. But overall, that is pretty good coverage. Jacob Pedersen, a tight end, down to make the stop. Well, here comes the other Mr. Efficiency, and this is Andy Dalton. And uh, what a career he has had at Fort Worth, Herbie. 6'3", 220, 41 and 7 as a four-year starter for TCU. Very, very intelligent thing he said to us, you know, between the preparation, the experience, I've seen everything that every defense has to offer. That experience will be big tonight with his decision-making. Ed Wesley is a running back who just switched to the right. They throw on first down for 10 yards to Jimmy Young, the senior from Monroe, Louisiana. And this Horn Frog offense, which has averaged over 43 points a game. And there is Ed Wesley. Tucker will join him. We're going to use Evan Frosch today as a tight end against his Badger defense frequently. Marcus Cannon, number 61, out of Odessa, Texas. Great battle on the edge against J.J. Watt, number 99. Dalton, an efficient runner. And he makes his way out to the 43-yard line, forcing Henry to make the stop. Yeah, 77 carries on the year, and he does it just enough. J.J. Watt collapses down on the zone read on Ed Wesley, and he's able to pull the ball out. And they, pull, they call that play just enough, Brent, to keep the defense honest, make them appreciate that, and avoid the defense from collapsing down on the ball carrier at all times. An 11-yard run, back-to-back -back first downs for the Horned Frogs. Their first series, five wide, empty backfield. Dalton has time, and the receiver was down, and there's a penalty. Curley goes down, and the penalty is called for pass interference, and it's on Smith. And Devin Smith putting too much pressure on Curley. He's got a little bit physical there before the ball. Was... Pass interference, number 10 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. What a contrast in styles, by the way, here. TCU coming out in their spread formation, empty formation. This is Jimmy Young dropping. And on the inside of that was Curley, who got pushed before the ball got there. It was a good call by the officials. But TCU wants to isolate these Wisconsin linebackers and safeties in space in both the run game and the pass attack. Now that basically a full house backfield and Badgers read it perfectly in Zegwu 
makes his first stop of the game, number 93. Really good discipline by Nezegwu. Watch him come down. He just is able to avoid the block of Dooley. And I don't know if Dooley's assignment, the pulling guard is supposed to be able to pick that up or if maybe on that play, because it's an option attack, they're hoping that Nezegwu will maybe move to the outside be caught off guard and allow the quarterback to dip underneath that. But that time, Nezegwu was all over it, reading his keys perfectly. Again, empty and out the backfield. Let's go! Deflected, incomplete, and that was J.J. Watt making his first impact of this game by deflecting that pass. Third down and ten. So that Badger front. J.J has been a star all-american efficient linebacker somewhat underrated keep an eye on number nine blake sorensen the secondary and of course valai number two is a star at safety hard hitter third down and ten now for tcu He throws for a first down to Jimmy Young. That's the second catch of the game for Young. And that picks up another first down. And remember, that was third and long. Absolutely. And I think a little bit of confusion here by Finellis because of the formation and the way they stacked their receivers there to the, to the field. How about the arm strength by Andy Dalton on third and ten getting back there and making a great throw to Jimmy Young before he was even close to the sideline, showing tremendous velocity on that throw. Matthew Tucker now the running back. Play action to him. Dalton has plenty of time incomplete. Curtis Clay was the intended receiver and I think Dalton thought he was going to work a little closer to the sideline and the Rose Bowl field is the best field that you're going to see in college football but there's been a lot of rain in Southern California and I don't know if it's the new cleats that TCU is wearing but I've really noticed whether it's on a kickoff return or there's receivers trying to get out of breaks there's a lot of the TCU wide receivers are slipping something to keep an eye on I think throughout this football game especially in the early going Tucker and Wayman James now in that backfield Dalton keeping it and running for the third time. Stop made by Bo Allen, freshman. Every time you run the quarterback, it gives you an advantage with the numbers, and it makes this Wisconsin defense. It's so concerned about Curley and Jimmy Young and all the speed on the perimeter. It makes him have to focus back to the quarterback on and to Andy Dalton. And all that's doing is not only picking up yards and giving him a manageable third down, it's setting up other plays down the road to get back out on the perimeter third down again for the Frogs. And there is a penalty flag. Watt was pointing the finger at Roth saying that he was leaning a little bit but it looked like J.J. Watt whether he's pulled off or not it's going to come down to either. Before the snap false start number 70 on the offense five yard penalty J.J. Nice Roth. Yeah, from J.J. Watt as he went around him. Top of the screen, 99, a two-point stance. You see, just because of the respect that he has for J.J. Watt, he's trying to get a little bit of a head start to jump out there to help out. Now they've moved J.J. Watt around a little bit. Now he's on the inside over the right guard. So he's played both right and left defensive end. Now he's lined up a tackle trying to get a rush on Dalton, who throws... Got another first down. Converted on third and 11. And again, it is Jimmy Young who is on his way to a monster here. What a tremendous drive here for Andy Dalton. Second time, third down and long. The offensive line's given him time. And the receivers, if, if Dalton has time to throw against his secondary and against these linebackers, Dalton's going to make him pay for it. That time, Watt got up again, almost knocked the ball down. But Walton finds, or Dalton finds his man downfield. Ball is at the Badger, 26. Not afraid to stick his helmet in no. there, is he, Herbie? Here no. in the early going, uh, Watt making the stop, but 
Andy Dalton has come to run a little bit. He has, and, and clearly with having a month to prepare, they see something that they can take advantage of, and just picking up just three or four or five yards here and there, and also you wonder if it eventually sets up a bigger play down the road where they start to bite down on Dalton, maybe running the ball, and TCU loves double moves. They can give him a little move to the inside and then go deep downfield, and Dalton could get him and maybe crease him for a touchdown. Yeah, Dalton has carried the ball four times, throws it again, pump fake, goes back down the middle of the end zone, Touchdown, Horn Frogs. Bart Johnson, the senior from Brownwood, Texas, a 23-yard scoring strike. And there it was set up by what he was doing, just as you called. And the double move is something that TCU has had such great success with. The biggest game of the year against Utah on the road. They had success in a touchdown a couple times early in that game with double moves. And Dalton, because of his patience, lets the play develop, doesn't give it away. And all the throws that they had underneath Finally, they got the safety Aaron Henry to bite up, and they went right behind him. Ross Evans tacks on the extra point. TCU takes its first lead, 7-3, over the co-champions of the Big Ten. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game is presented by Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. And in part by Tostitos, Lay's Classic, and Sun Chips. We make them natural. You make them fun. And Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, this morning, the 122nd Rose Bowl Parade featured the TCU and Wisconsin marching bands. Paula Dean, of course, the Grand Marshal. One of the great cooks, and it was so cute when she asked Steve Shaw before the game, can I flip this coin with a skillet? And he said, no, ma'am. So here's the kickoff. Fielded on the six-yard line by Gilruth, looking for an alley. And he is out to the 32. Herbie, let's go back to that score. Well, we, they had so much success underneath. And here's Jeremy Curley, who's going to come in. It's kind of show that it's going to be a screen. The guy that they picked on is Aaron Henry coming up to respect that. And then the touchdown gets right behind them. But watch Aaron Henry come in, see that he thinks it's potentially a screen to Curley. And then right behind him, it opens up a nice seam there to Bart Johnson. And the patience that time by Andy Dalton paid off. It's Ten play drives, six passes. That was textbook that time for Justin Fuente, the co-offensive coordinator for the Horn Frogs calling the plays. Ball is the tailback. Workhorse here in the early going, and this time he has jumped at the point of attack. So here is this. Some have said undersized, but I want to tell you this. This is a very fast defense. Keep an eye on number 96, Wayne Daniels. He's Ed. Remember Jerry Hughes? Great rusher. Tank Carter and Tanner Brock, two tackling machines at the linebacking spot. And a very tall, rangy group of safeties. They play that base 4-2-5. Tolzien, middle, and he throws to his favorite target, number 84, Lance Kendricks. And Kendricks is a guy who they want to try to isolate one-on-one. -on -one. This is a nice job of giving Tolzien time, but look at, again, another defense, another player from TCU slipping, this time to Karen Cuba, who was isolated one-on-one -on -one against Kendricks. Kendricks makes a move to the inside, Cuba goes down. Very simple throw for Tolzien, who completed 74% of his passes this year. Tops in the country. 14 yards is the gain. And on the first down, here is Ball on a sweep left. And he breaks a tackle. Finally brought down by Greg McCoy. These big offensive linemen trying to get a push. This is the battle we all want to see. The movement from TCU's defensive line. How about the center, Peter Kahn's trying to lead the way. You don't see that very often from a center. The athletic ability to come around and try to help out. He gets there, knocks away two TCU defenders, and Ball gets up and picks up more yards. John Clay has just checked in for the first time as the tailback. They show a power-eye formation. Play action. Tolzien 
Comes to the near side, and it is complete. Aubrey Darris with his first catch of the game. Now here's the view from our direct tv ultimate picture cam good job again he's in rhythm both these quarterbacks have come to throw and actually the pressure got to him he does a good job throwing it from the left hash all the way to the right sideline a long throw but a good call on an early down by paul chris try to take advantage of the aggressive tcu defense crowding that line of scrimmage play action again Got a man wide open. Down to the one-yard line they go on the pass to Brady Ewing, the fullback. Another play action here to try to get these defensive backs up close to the line of scrimmage. And what down did it come on? First and ten. When you're thinking, uh, you got to be ready for Big John Clay. They're going to run the ball. The safeties get out of position, and Ewing, who is known as one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country, showing the hands there, his eighth catch of the year. And how about the shot that Scott Tolzien takes that time from Tank Carter? Now you would expect for sure big number 32 is coming at him behind that massive offensive line. Here he is. Touchdown. Wisconsin regains the lead. It's going to be fun. That bad kick. <laughs> you know it's coming. You just got to be able to make that play. That initial contact, we've seen it in these first couple drives. The Wisconsin running backs are running through those would-be tacklers, those arm tackles, and getting more yards. And that time, big, powerful John Clay gets it into the end zone. Welsh tacks on the extra point. So Clay's first touch of the day. Results in the Badgers' first touchdown of the day. Farmers Insurance bringing you aerial coverage of the Rose Bowl game and coverage for your auto home, life, and business. Well, during that timeout, they brought out the level on the goalpost that the Badgers just used for their extra point. And it did require a little bit of an adjustment. I've like seen it in basketball. Back. Yeah, have you? Yeah, oh yeah. Just to level up, and now we're set to go. <laughs> they are kicking to the corner, and this time Curley is over on that side. They want the ball in his hands, and why not? He explodes to the 43 yard line, and Welsh. The kicker is there to bring him down. Badgers lead the Horn Frogs. We'll be right back. Andy Dalton and the Frog offense ready to go back to work. Ed Wesley is a running back. And in that scoring drive by TCU, they were two of two on third down, and both times that was third and ten. And Andy Dalton carried the ball as a runner four times. This time he hands it off to Wesley, and the stop is made by linebacker Mike Taylor. Looking forward to seeing how Wisconsin tries to adjust to this uh, this skill and speed. The, the thing that's most challenging facing this TCU offense is how multiple they are with their formations and personnel groupings. Brent Bielema telling us this week, if I had one week to get ready for this offense, it would be a nightmare. Having the extra time has really helped them dial in to all the different formations and adjustments you have to make as a defense. They're the full house backfield, basically, and pump going deep again. And he's got him inside the 15-yard line. Josh Boyce, his first catch of the game. Boy, Josh Boyce has a tremendous future in Fort Worth. The freshman who had a 93-yard touchdown against Utah, another double move. This time they catch Brinkley peaking on an underneath route. This is why you have to respect the Hindi Dalton. This repertoire, he's got a lot of different receivers. He can throw it to anybody, and you have to respect the underneath game, and then they'll give you the pump fake, and they'll get downfield in a hurry. 44 yards. 
And the Horned Frogs empty out the backfield here on a first down and Dalton's fifth carry of the game. Let's give Taylor credit for another stop. The Badger linebacker. The big part of this game throughout the four quarters will be TCU containing J.J. Watt, which they've done a pretty good job of up to this point. But you know that's going to be an ongoing battle up front, not just for Marcus Cannon, who's the left tackle, but the entire offensive line and the pass protection group of, uh, of TCU trying to keep him out of that backfield. Curley is one of the three wide to the right. Dalton again. Close to a first down. A designed quarterback draw. This is a big part of this game plan right now for TCU. Waiting just a beat or two and then just following the big center, Jake Kirkpatrick, and also the running back, Ed Wesley. And so far, Andy Dalton not just hurting the Badgers through the air, but also running the football six times for 27 yards. Third down. And note it's not third and goal. They can still get a first down down here. Here comes Dalton again for the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. The Badgers lead did not last long. Folks, we've got two teams that average 43.3 points a game. Remember the bowl game Andy Dalton had last year against Boise State? I think this game is personal for Dalton. Another zone read. J.J. Watt collapsed down on the running back. Dalton makes a great read. Looks like they're going to take a peek at this. He had his ball, the ball in his left arm instead of the right arm. Just going to take a peek to see if the ball got across the goal line before he went out of bounds. Remember, it's where the ball is, not, his, not where his foot is. So as, before, as he gets out of bounds, that's, that's worth another look for sure. Should have put that ball last second over into that right arm and extended it across the goal line. Well, Dave Perry is up here in the booth with us. And of course, he's done a great job through the years, not only with the Big Ten previously, but now as the head of the Federation of Officials. And he thinks he was in the end zone. He just gave a little thumbs up over here. So we will see. Remember, it is an SEC instant replay official who will take a look at it. Unlike the NFL, Shaw will not go underneath the hood here. And then they will receive word of it. Even if it were to be ruled not a touchdown, it would be a first and goal. Yes, it would. One thing to keep in mind, very, very short. But it looks to us and to Dave Perry like he got in. What do you think? If, I, if Dave Perry says that, that it's in, then, then chances are it's, it's in. It looks, it's definitely a close call. The play was outstanding. Watch J.J. Watt come down. Hesitates just for a second. Dalton's got the confidence to think, I'm going to pull this ball, and I know I can beat him to the corner. So they, instead of thinking, hey, you got to block J.J. Watt, it'll be a touchdown. There it is. Dave Perry is right. Why not? You know, he has a son, John Perry. This is his third year as a referee in the National Football League. And my friend... Dave, I think he's refereed and umpired just about everything in the world. So we count on him. Now. So here we go. We've had 23 points scored here in the first quarter of this football game. And now Ross Evans tacks on another extra point for the Frogs. Justin Fuente is the offensive coordinator. You saw Andy Dalton on the telephone. I want to give you one quick uh, anecdote as you look at Fuente's and then that conversation with him one about Andy. I said to him, okay, what was the best thing about going to Disneyland this year? And he said, we got to go to the front of every line. Oh, I love and that. it was such an honest human reaction. And folks, don't we all wish we could go to the head of the line at Disneyland when we're there? They had a wonderful time. Two very class football teams and operations in this game. He kind of had that look on his face like, the best part? Well... They, they let us go to the front of the line. Like, can you believe that? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> well, there's Coach Patterson, who in his 10 years with TCU has done such a fabulous job of putting together 
the nucleus of this team. Remember, he was a, a defensive coordinator under Dennis Franchoni before Dennis left for Alabama, and then he became the head coach. He's been offered other head coaching jobs. I know that Kansas State was interested. That's uh, Gary's alma mater, but he's very comfortable. And uh, he has it going down there. They're improving the stadium. Great fan base in Fort Worth. Kevin Charles will kick it off. And White is back deep with Gilreath. And again, it is Gilreath. Good special teams coverage there. And on Monday night, ESPN delivers the Discover Orange Bowl, featuring two of the hottest teams and two of the top quarterbacks in the nation. High 10 player of the year, Andrew Luck, leads the Stanford Cardinal against Tyrod Taylor and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern time. And Kirby, this is a heck of a duel. Different styles, yeah. but very good. Boy, what a great job Andrew Luck did this year with their balanced attack for the Cardinal Jim Harbaugh and Tyrod Taylor, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the game, and tremendous leadership for the Hokies. Mighty ball back in the backfield here for Tolzien. And here they come behind that massive offensive line. And you just get the feeling that the first team that can discover a stop defense is going to get the upper hand. Yeah. So far, we haven't seen it. We've not. And it makes you really think about turnover. Who, who the big turnovers in this game and who ends up winning the turnover margin to give their own offense another opportunity to attack the, the other defense also could be a big factor before this game said and done. But these offenses got after it the first quarter. And that was Boyce, the young man who set up that TCU touchdown who was receiving attention on the sideline. 14-10. TCU leads Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. Welcome back to the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. High scoring opening quarter 14 10 TCU a non automatic qualifier with a lead over Wisconsin the co-champions of the Big Ten in 2012 TCU will move to the Big East and you see the San Gabriel Mountains in the background what a glorious <laughs> setting this is we open the second quarter Badger football second down and five Scott Tolzien Hands it off to ball or explodes in the middle again to the 46 yard line and Cuba makes it stop. Herbie, you made the point uh, that battle between the front and the defense very lopsided in the first quarter. Uh, everybody wanted to see how the size of Wisconsin's offensive line would do with the, 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 the not the lack of sides, but just the, the, uh, the speed, the aggressive nature that TCU has, the way they move people around. They try to confuse you, and for a quarter anyway, and now another play, Wisconsin really controlling things at the line of scrimmage against the speed of TCU. It is big that TCU held the Badgers to a field goal on their first drive of this game. And they come back with White, the freshman. And let's check in down below with Aaron Andrews. And just to add on the size disadvantage with TCU's defense, Gary Patterson's been walking over to the bench every time they've been there and said, tackle low. Do not tackle them in the middle. You won't get them down. You have to tackle lower. And with that was a couple of the good tackles. Johnson made one. You pointed that yeah. out. It got down into the... Uh, you got to get low and you got to gang tackle. You know, the only way you're going to slow down this big offense, but not the line, but the backs, is you got to have two or three different for jerseys trying to slow down these running backs. Second and six. And now it'll be third down and James White. St. Thomas Aquinas, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Badgers do a great job of seeking out some skill players from the state of Florida and the state of Texas, Ohio. And they do a heck of a job of recruiting right there in their home base, Wisconsin, Minnesota. The J.J. Watt story, of course, many of you are very familiar with. He was a tight end at Central Michigan. Brian Kelly left, committed to Minnesota. Glenn Mason left, finally enrolled with his heart back in Madison, sat out a year, and switched over to the defense, and he's been a great player. Now we've got third down and three. Very close. The front hill for the Frogs against White this time. Except they're about a half a yard short. Brett Bielema has an aggressive nature. Remember that call that he made against Iowa to help the Badgers 
end up beating the Hawkeyes on the road. So you know his his nature is to go for it. And the big fella, number 32, is Daddy. We grew up admiring one Jimmy Brown of the Cleveland Browns and his son where is that familiar number 32 that Brown wore during his Hall of Fame career with the Browns and let's see if he can hammer like Big Jim over the top first down Badgers actually pretty good penetration that time by Tanner Brock, the linebacker, 35, is able to slip through there, hits him low, but the size of Clay, not only does he get through right there, Brock hit him right before the line of scrimmage, but you can see that John Clay, even though he's a big back, pretty nimble on his feet. He got through Brock, landed on his feet, and picked up a few more yards. This is where Wisconsin typically likes to get into their play-action game. They start to sustain a drive, get you thinking about the run, and then they can start to throw the ball. There is a play action. White, the running back, going to throw back. Incomplete, and they had him slipped out of the backfield. And Tolzien would love to have that throw back. Yes, he would. It, he, he needed to wait just a little bit longer for White to be able to separate and get downfield. He also had Lance Kendricks on that, a little bit, about another 10 or 15 yards downfield. But like I said, and this is something that TCU, they've talked all week about using their eyes. We're, we know we have to match up physically to the run game, but we have to use our eyes for discipline for Gary Patterson to get back against the play action. That time they left a couple receivers open there on the first and 10 play action pass. Mighty ball back on the field. Gets the carry. Huge hole in the middle for nine yards. I mean, the middle of that now, Peter Kahn's grades out as high as any offensive lineman. Look at that, that block by 66. He blew the door off. Hans is one of the top centers around. He's only a sophomore. But see how they get you. They get you on skates and they push you to the sideline. That time, all three. You had a block by Kahn's. Moffitt, the left guard. Karimi, who won the outlet. They locked up with their guys and just pushed them to the sideline. And that's how that hole opened up right up into the middle. Monty Ball closing in on 100 yards. He has 96. 10 carries, 40 in one carry. Looking for 100, and he's thrown back, but he picked up the first down. Corey Grant making the stop. Well, this is such a mismatch right now. There's such confidence, I think, from Wisconsin and Paul Chris to play calling. I think it's a matter of, hey, they know that we're going to run. They have extra men up at the line of scrimmage, but we have such an advantage with our size and the way we're pushing them around. We're going to continue to run the football, mix in play action pass here or there, and I think that's going to be the kind of the formula that they use to continue to move the football right down the field. They've only had one negative play so far in this game. And Tolzien on a busted play. Wayne Daniels throwing him to the ground. Self-destructing, which offense eventually puts the ball down and allows the opponent to pick it up. Talked about that could that could go a long way in determining who wins this game with the way these two offenses are moving up and down the field. Huge for TCU to put the Badgers in second down and long. Second down and 11. And the handoff to White, the freshman. And he is stuffed, and now it is third and long, and the Badgers have to come up with a pass. Tank Carter makes the stop. Remember when he met with us after practice, he said, we have to beat him to the point of attack. He gets behind the lineman and just uses his speed to be able to chase down White, the ball carrier, who's the fastest back of the Badgers, of the, of the trio that they have. That time, a great job and great instincts there by the junior linebacker. Kendricks off to the right. They've gone to tune once in this game. Tolzien comes in underneath. Not a first down throw. Greg McCoy comes up on Anderson. And that was just great, great coverage downfield. And these routes, because it was third and long, took a lot of time. TCU got some pressure, but Scott Tolzien showing that he also can sit in there. Picks up enough yards to have a, 
a uh, likely field goal attempt that they have a chance to put up some more points here with Philip Welch. He was terrific in the pregame warm-up. Made several 50 yarders. He's from the right hash. He's 8 of 11 from the 40 to the 49. And he pulled this one to the left and missed it. Missed a 39 yard field goal. He was coming up empty in this game on any drive oh. is huge. Yeah, he was 7 of 7 inside 40 yards coming into this game. So the missed field goal, like you said, it's a breaking a serve. Now the ball is back to Andy Dalton. Now we'll see if the Badgers can hold at the point of attack. One of the great scenes. Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. TCU 14, Wisconsin 10, second quarter. Jet into round, and deep goes Dalton, incomplete, and he's lucky it wasn't picked up. Now, let's go back to the quarterback versus J.J. Watt. Herbie. Yeah, and, and this is something that they've shown at times, but look, here's J.J. Watt, one of the premier defensive linemen in the country. How do they plan to attack him? Not blocking him. They've been reading him, making him make a decision, and here he's taking Wesley on an option read. Same thing here on the touchdown. They're not blocking him. Dalton's wait, waiting to see if Watt's going to take the quarterback or the running back. He hesitates just for a second. Dalton uses the speed, enough speed to get into the end zone. So far, seven carries for 31 yards. On second down, there's a little bit of a flanker screen to the outside, and Curley's first catch, I believe, of this game. It is indeed. They've gone to Young several times, but they want to get Curley, their game breaker, involved. Anytime you can get the football in his hands, it's a good thing for TCU. That's why he's back on punts and kickoffs. He's just one of those typical players that you see today in these spread formations where they try to get him the football in space, and whatever way they can do that, they feel that they have a chance to pick up big yards. TCU is 3 of 3 on third down. Make it three of four. That is short of the first down. Bring another TCU player making a cut and going down. I mean, if, if he doesn't slip, he's got a chance to be able to catch the ball and get upfield. But another TCU player, the reason he's falling is his lost his balance there and did not have a chance at all but it's a stop nonetheless for Wisconsin's defense so here's the story folks you are looking at a 280 pound punter <laughs> Anson Kelton looking now take a look at this huh he looked like a linebacker or a defensive end Gilreath return ace for the Badgers fields it on the 25 and out of bounds on that far side so it was the Badgers' turn to stand up defensively. They did exactly that. They'll have the ball when you come back. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Direct TV. Don't just watch TV. Direct TV. The touchdown big box, only at Taco Bell. And Allstate. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? 55 years of the Beef Bowl, that eating competition between the Rose Bowl teams on separate nights at Lowry's, the prime rib. And uh, Gabe Karimi, uh, Herbie had a chance to ask him, I said, how many orders did you get, big fella? He said five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there he is. I mean, he's a total eclipse when you stand up there next to him. I can't imagine how these defensive players are even trying to find the money backs behind <laughs> this offensive line and here they come hammering with John Clay and uh, Aaron Andrews uh, Herbie has noticed a lot of slipping on the part of TCU what's the story we're looking at them those are the cleats brand new designed by Nike for the Rose Bowl they're actually supposed to prevent slipping TCU got these cleats Brent on Sunday and I heard from their staff even during practices they were changing them out so I just asked the equipment staff are you able to change out the cleats in the game? They didn't bring another pair. Look for a lot of tape. <laughs> Second down and four. Tolzine pulls out and fires incomplete. That was great coverage by Jones on that play against Patterson. Well, they, these hybrid safeties, Colin Jones and 
Cuba on one side, you have TJ Johnson. These guys do a good job of being physical and trying to come up and run support, but athletic enough to get back in coverage. And TCU again has put Wisconsin and Tolzien into a third down situation. Third down, Herbie for the Badgers. They're two of five in this game. Under pressure, incomplete. Two. They've gone to him twice, and Jones is there again. He has done an excellent job. He's a senior from Bridgeport, Texas. Great coverage, and this time they got pressure finally on Scott Tolzien. It's the first three and out of the football game that we've had here, and it's TCU who's this time able to bring the pressure and lower the boom. They brought both their linebackers, and Tanner Brock got home. Tolzien lucky he got that ball off with two plays back to back by Colin Jones and good coverage downfield. Now here we go with Curley back deep for TCU. Nortman and it is stopped. Whistle blue. Before the snap, false start, number 36 on the offense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. So Ethan Armstrong picks up that penalty against Michigan State. The Spartans struck on a punt return for a touchdown. See what kind of coverage the Badgers come up with. And they're going to fake it and take off on this. And he dives for the first down. Oh, my, Brad Norman. That's one of those where you better make it or stay away from the coach. Deja vu, Wisconsin, with the Big Ten Championship on the road in Iowa City. The exact same call, and this time, Nortman was taking forever to finally get upfield. Here's our, our view from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. The hesitation, I thought he might have waited too long, but he's just buying time for the convoy to get in front of him. All of a sudden, he's become an offensive weapon for this football team this year. You don't see fake punts on fourth and nine. And your own fourth territory. and nine very often. <laughs> It'll be interesting as that was ball back in the game. And I believe he'd just gone over 100 yards with that run. T.J. Johnson makes the stop. It'll be interesting to find out after the game if the youngster saw something and did it on his own back there or they actually called for the fake on fourth and nine. Knowing Brett Bielema and, and the courage that he has shown this year, I, I think that was a call play. I don't think Nortman has the courage to be able to go out there on his own, <laughs> although he did hesitate so early. But Brett Bielema, that could change the complexion of the game as far as the momentum as well. Second down and six. Stoned in the backfield. Best defensive play of the game, and Tank Carter from Sweeney, Texas, makes it. This is textbook here for Gary Patterson. A great job by these linebackers the last two series of getting underneath the blocks and getting into the backfield. Tanner Brock starting this himself, and this time it's Tank Carter, 43. These two have been very instrumental this year for the Horn Frogs, and they're starting to settle down and get a better read on Wisconsin's offense. Third and eight can they find Lance Kendricks <laughs> Tolzien has time diving catch incomplete they wave it off they say Toon did not have the ball He's calling for the, hey, call the timeout. I caught this football. Make him review this. Well, we're going to take a look at it. Boy, that hand, his right hand looked like it might have gotten under. I don't know if the football touched the ground. This what is a, a very tough call. Brent, just the effort here by two. Now that he's healthy, you can start to see the type of receiver that he is. I, I would think they're definitely going to take another look at this. Remember, it was ruled incomplete on the field. That's yeah. always a consideration on these plays. Yeah. Yeah, there it is stopped by Shaw because the instant replay fellas are looking at it. The previous play is under further review. Right. I'll tell you, the effort here on third down. Third down. Watch his right hand. 
as it turns, does it get underneath before the ball touches? That is a tough call. What would be your call? <laughs> uh, I'd be looking at I think his right hand got underneath. I think it's a catch. What about you? I think his right hand as it turns it, remember the got ball underneath has, the football. It's incomplete if that ball slides. I honestly, as Dave Perry just told us, I did not see it slide, okay? So uh, this is a very tough call from upstairs. Uh, Nick Toon thought right away that he'd made the catch. Yeah, so did. we'll come right back. Yep. Well, we are back, and they are still waiting the ruling on a very, yes. very tough call. Ruled incomplete on the field. Has to be indisputable, folks. Watch the right hand. Is it underneath it? Ball doesn't slip. Do you turn it over? with that video evidence. How about the hand strength, by the way, of Nick Toon? He's like, I review this. That's a catch. That's a catch. I don't know. It's going to be, th this is one of the longer reviews we've had. That's and I don't blame him, by the way. Either. I don't either. This is a, it's a third down and nine, or third and eight. And if it's a catch, it's a first down. If not, it's obviously a punting situation. But with Bill, Here comes Steve know. with the decision. After review, it was a completed pass. It will be first and ten for Wisconsin. Play will resume after the media timeout. David Perry is two for two. You made me go out on a limb before we got Dave Perry involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, All right, 422 to left here in the first half now. Let's not forget not only that play, but the fake punt. This is the same drive where Wisconsin living on the edge here on this drive and trying to take the lead back down by four. Play action out of the power formation. Tulzine is sacked for the first time today. He is ripped down, and Jones, one of the safeties, coming in. Well, this is a great job by TCU uh, downfield with their coverage, and you can see from the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam, the play took too long to develop. It's first and ten play action, but the blitz and the pressure this time by, again, Colin Jones, the senior, who's having a great game. In a game that's been dominated by the offenses, Jones, in these last few series, along with the two linebackers, Carter and Brock, really starting to step up. Second and 17, White flares. They throw back to the middle, and Kendricks breaks a tackle. So Lance Kendricks catches the pass, and Cuba wrestles him down. He's a point of emphasis for this TCU defense. They know how often the Badgers like to get the 84. Tanner Brock is dialed in on Lance Kendricks. He is not able to hold on and make the tackle. He slows him down well enough. But I think Gary Patterson and the adjustments that he and his staff are making on this side of the football starting to really start to play out here for the Horn Frogs. They seem a little bit more dialed in here these last few series. Getting a little more leverage with yeah. that quick defensive line now not this time nothing doing they were held out and as a result Tolzien burns them with the pass to David Gilreath that's 13 yards and a great job by the offensive line here interesting the soft coverage look how easy Wisconsin can get off the line of scrimmage and for an attacking defense rare to see them just let Gilreath and the Wisconsin offensive line with a free or the, the Wisconsin receivers with a free release getting downfield and not getting any kind of push at all by the secondary typically they're up in your face at the line of scrimmage the freshman back on the field here comes white Battles his way for about a yard behind the right side of that line. Well, coming up on the Chevrolet Halftime Report, Chris Lee and Desmond, they'll break down the first half for you, and we'll hear from both marching bands. That'll be coming up at halftime, and there are some of their lead stories. What did the Big Ten lay an egg today? New Year's Day. Earth. John Clay is in as the running back, second and nine. Kendricks is on the right side of the formation. 
Nothing doing. And this is going to be third and long. Carter again. Tank. One of the best named linebackers in the country. <laughs> Your Tank Carter. You've got to be able to make plays. And like I said, he and Tanner Brock doing a really good job of getting away from blocks. In the first quarter, Peter Kahn's and John Moffitt and Gabe Karimi and all the way across Kevin Zeitler, Ricky Wagner, they were not only controlling things up front, they were getting to the next level and getting to those linebackers. They've not been able to do that as effectively here. Tolzien has time, snaps it off a little short, got back to Kendricks again, and that was defended by T.J. Johnson. Well, if he was willing to go on fourth and nine, he yeah. will go on fourth and inches. Great effort here. <laughs> well, this is two of the best players on the field going head to head. Lance Kendricks against T.J. Johnson. Ball is thrown right on the money. Kendricks uses every ounce of his body, including his thighs there, to hold What's on this? to that football. Well, here's Philip Welsh, and of course, I think I forgot to look at the clock. And quickly, Welsh came on the field. And that's exactly why the field goal team came out. <laughs> right. I had lost track of the last 30 seconds, and it's a one-point game. A great Rose Bowl unfolding. Second half of the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Let's check it down below now. Aaron Andrews is with Wisconsin coach Brett Bielma. Aaron. Brett, thanks. Well, that fake or that field goal wouldn't have happened without that fake punt there. You have to tell me what was the call on fourth and nine? Well, we ran it, we ran it the first time, and our guy jumped off sides. We knew it was going to be good. That guy did a great job reacting, but they've shown it all year on film, just something we took advantage of. Third down, how do you stop them? I know you just said that's the problem. That's the problem. Also play action over our head. We told our DBs we're not going to give them anything, up anything over the top. We do that like we did on those series. You know, we're going to be off the field and give it back to our O. All right, thanks for making time. Brent? Aaron, thank you very much. And uh, certainly that clears up any guessing. It was certainly a call play by the coaching staff, and they come away with it. But, but Herbie, I want to go back to the last seven minutes because the end of the half sort of got by me and Wisconsin didn't use any timeouts. I think it got by everybody including Brett Bielema in Wisconsin because they're driving and there was so much that happened the fake punt the catch by tune where he got his hand under the officials looked at it for three or four minutes and I think the time got away from them because they're an aggressive coaching staff they want points there not just a field goal they want to go for the end zone and I think that that uh, the clock getting down that quickly may have surprised them but now we get to the point where you look at TCU. Andy Dalton has accounted for 140 of the 141 yards of offense for TCU in the first half. They've got to be able to mix in some of their playmakers besides Dalton trying to carry everything. Herbie, let's go now to the Home Depot coaching adjustments. Well, and, and Dalton did a great job of, in the first few drives, getting the ball thrown underneath and trying to make this Wisconsin defense appreciate that. And once he got him to respect that aspect, of, that's where they got the pump and go, the double move to Bart Johnson for the touchdown. So that's something I think Dalton will continue to do. And, and you think about what Andy Dalton has done, 41-7 and seven as a starter. He's got great leadership. But right now, not only is he throwing the football, he also has seven carries tonight, which uh, leads this team. As we take a look at the comparison between our two quarterbacks, Tolzien, 8 of 12 for 106, and Dalton, 7 of 10 for 109. Herbie, of course, pointed out that rushing 
difference down there. I do want to point out one thing, Herbie. The Badgers have had the ball for 21 minutes and 28 seconds to 8.32 for TCU. And the big issue here for Gary Patterson is his defense. They've made some adjustments, and they played much better at defending the run with their linebackers and safeties. But it's a four-quarter game, and those big bodies start to lean on you. You wonder how they'll hold up, and does fatigue become an issue in the second half for Gary and his defense? TCU won the toss and deferred, so they will receive the ball to start the second half. And that means that Jeremy Curley and Welsh has done a very good job of pinning Curley to the sideline. Yes. Once on the right, once on the left over here. Now, our lead has changed hands three times, and we've got a one-point game as we get ready to start the second half. And, boy, I, Harvey, I really think you put your finger on it. it how will TCU hold up when we get into that fourth quarter with that huge offensive line banging on them? TCU only 18 offensive plays in the first half. Short and away from Curley this time. Today I'm back and a good decision again. Badgers special teams coming up big here. And Shivers makes the stop on Southward. I should say Southward brought down Shivers. Let me just uh, reverse who was doing what. And here is uh, the Horn Frogs eight yards in the second quarter. And a lot of that had to do with in three plays. Wisconsin controlled the football. Their last two drives, Wisconsin had a 12-play drive, which resulted in a missed field goal, and then a 13-play drive to end the half. Of course, they hit the field goal to get it to 14-13, but Andy Dalton hadn't been out there much since the first quarter. And Ed Wesley's carried the ball only once. He's in that backfield, and there was movement. Watt says he was pulled off. So that would be a false start and costly to TCU to start the second half. Before the snap, false start, number 84 on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Devin Frosch, the tight end. That's exactly how Gary Patterson did not want to start this second half in a one-point game. Wesley and Tucker both in the mix. And they give it to Curley. And the Badgers certainly not fooled by that formation or the presence of 85 in that backfield. Kind of that diamond formation that we've seen pop up here late in the year in college football. TCU, not that they've gone to it a lot, but I don't think they're very confident in running the football in the more traditional way. I think they're... The, the thing that they feel most comfortable with in running is when they've run Andy Dalton with his own read. Spread the field. Dalton hit on the release, flutters, and a penalty flag is thrown. Penalty flag is thrown. I believe it was Smith who had the coverage that time. Curley, the intended receiver. And Bielma saying it's not catchable over there. Should pick this flag up. Pass interference. Number 10 on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Devin Smith, then here it is. I think the reason Devin Smith is frustrated is Curley, in trying to adjust to where the ball was thrown, actually went into Devin Smith. That, that's that, that, I think that's the reason that, Cur or that uh, Smith is frustrated because he felt Curley came into him. Dalton got hit right as he released the ball by Hemer. But anytime there is contact like that and it's in question, it's always going to go on the defense. First down and 10. Ball just across the 40. Now they get it to Wesley. Dances outside. Picks up a couple of yards on that first down. Sorensen. 
Making the stop for the Badgers. It's a TCU offense. It prides itself on running the football. Justin Fuente telling us this week, hey, we run the football to win games. We throw to score, but we run the ball. Our identity is our running game. And to think that they only had one carry by the running back in the first half is definitely not like TCU. Dalton from the pocket has another first down and breaking free. Wesley, the running back. His biggest play of the game, and it comes on a reception, and it sets TCU up with a 33-yard game. And this is a form of the running game. You get Wesley flanked out, and you get him matched up against a linebacker in space. This is what TCU wanted to do all along. Can Mike Taylor make a play? Can Blake Sorensen make a play out in space? Because if you give Wesley the football against a linebacker and he builds up momentum, he's going to be able to run through some tackles and shake and bake and get around people. He also got out outside of Niles Brinkley. Tucker now the running back. The ball at the Badgers, 25. Dalton adjusts his wide receiver. Looks for that quick flare out there. Got it. First down, Jimmy Young. Signaled to him, moved him in a little bit closer, then threw it to him for the first down. There's the experience of Andy Dalton taking advantage of a soft corner up at the top. He sees that pre-snap. He sees that the corner is way off the line of scrimmage. Finellis, and he says, this is like pitch and catch. We do this in practice. I'm a four-year starter. I'll take this, and I'll take an easy first down. First down across the 15. From the pistol. And it is first down and goal as Matthew Tucker busts a play and TCU could be in business here. This time it's his own read and he's reading 93 Nizegwu and because of the success of Dalton running the ball, this time Nizegwu 93, there you see him, stays to the outside with the quarterback Andy Dalton and it opens up the, uh, the back that time, Matthew Tucker for big yards up the middle. Shivers is the lead fullback for him. And Shivers gets the call and barges on into the end zone. Touchdown, TCU. What a way to start the second half. Remember, they had the false start to go to first and 15 on the first play. Six plays, 71 yards. They mix the run with the pass, and Dalton puts them on the board. Don't forget the pass interference call. Absolutely. They get down inside there, and they give it to the big fella, Shivers, who pretty good push. We've been seeing Wisconsin's offensive line get a push. That time, the Horn Frogs getting a push. Evans tacks on the extra point. Still a one-possession game. TCU with the lead at the Rose Bowl, presented by Vizio. Happy New Year, everybody. With Kirk Herb Street and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger. And Farmers Insurance is bringing you aerial coverage of this Rose Bowl game and coverage for your auto home, life, and business. If you've just joined us, 21-13, TCU leads Wisconsin. And you can see the purple and red of a jammed Rose Bowl. Great day for a football game. The Horned Frogs just scored, and Kevin Charles will kick it away. Gilraith on a big hop, drops it, picks it back up, and down inside the 10-yard line. There's a penalty flag. There is a penalty flag on the 15. Illegal block in the back. Number 17 on the receiving team. It's going to be half the distance to the goal. First and 10. That really backs the Badgers up. When you come back, they will have the ball inside the five-yard line, trailing 21-13. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is brought to you by Discover. It pays to discover. Official card of the Bowl Championship Series. The new 2011 Ford F-150. 
built for tough. And the touchdown big box, only at Taco Bell. And just as soon as we're finished here in Pasadena, we're going to be sending you down to the desert. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma and Connecticut. Another BCS game set to unfold. And now the Badgers backed up. Monty Ball is the running back. Ball with 101 yards rushing here today. Gets the first call, adds to it. Picks his way to the 10th. And Herbie, let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Uh, late in the first half, Nick Toon on a third down and nine laid out and showed what good hands are all about. Strong hands here. They reviewed it, and the field they called it incomplete. They reviewed it and gave him the catch and gave him the first down. That is definitely Allstate good hands play so far in this Rose Bowl. Hammering away with Ball, who picks up the first down. But it's going to be a great battle here with Wisconsin backed up deep in their own territory. They're down. They need an answer. TCU really crowding the line of scrimmage against a two tight end look, two tight end set look of Wisconsin. They've got nine guys, almost ten guys up close to the line of scrimmage. So the Wisconsin offensive line and the running game against this athletic defense and a defense that's made some pretty good adjustments against that running game these last few series. Ball. Nothing doing. Tank Carter again. With Tanner Brock and Tank Carter, these last three possessions, they're getting behind and using their speed. The speed right now is blowing up this running game. And also, great job by Wayne Daniels of beating the block by 48 Pedersen, the, the tight end. Nowhere to go. And all of a sudden, the field beginning to tilt right now and favor Gary Patterson in this defense. Tank comes out. Horn Frogs expect a pass. Tolzien. Toon first down. So they go back to Nick Toon, and he came back to the ball like a good receiver, like his daddy did. Yeah, you and I are seeing the same thing. This is textbook on how to come back to the football, come back to your quarterback. You come downhill, you secure the football, and then you use your athletic ability to pick up the first down. He knew exactly where he was. He shakes Cuba's tackle attempt and then gets across that first down marker to pick up a much-needed first down for the Badgers. Al Toon, longtime star in the National Football League after graduating from Wisconsin. First down and 10. Tolzien again has great time and this time he comes back to him. Right time to call it Brent. You talked about it at the break. Got to get the ball back to Nick Toon in these last two plays. That's exactly what Scott Tolzien has done. He recognized one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that's the beauty of calling play action on first and ten. You get one-on-one -on -one coverage, you go against the best defensive back, best corner of TCU and Jason Teague, and Nick Toon again with those great hands secures that football. 18 yards for Toon. Taking a quick break. And they pound with ball in that offensive line who bounces outside this time. Makes the most of it before Teague trips him up on the play. I think it's time to, to recognize the Monty Ball story. When, when this camp started and Jason White came, or James White came in with a lot of recognition coming out of St. Thomas Aquinas, and he basically beat out Ball for that second position behind John Clay. And instead of going in the tank, he lost his carries. He was right there for most of the season until the Iowa game. And when John Clay got hurt and James White got hurt, they turned to Monty Ball, and that was his coming out party. But he stayed positive all year. And White is now on the field. Gets the carry. First down. He's got that escapability. Sure does. He brings that nice change of pace, the burst, to be able to get away from a guy initially and to get upfield in a hurry. 
And that's what makes this so neat is you have Ball, who is kind of a combination of White and Clay. White with the speed and the quickness, Clay with the power, and Monty Ball has power, but also, as we've seen, he's pretty shifty and can bounce to the outside. Coaches tell us all three, great relationship. They cheer for one another. There isn't any animosity whatsoever in that, in that team, or that uh, running back meeting room. Play action. Tolzine fires far side. Tone incomplete. Terrific coverage by McCoy and also. I think that the, the idea to go back to first and ten play action is what I think Paul Christ knew he had to do. Great effort again by Toon. But let's give Greg McCoy, who is at 5'10", going up against a big physical receiver, a lot of credit. The ball is perfectly thrown. It looked like Toon again was going to come up with a catch. But Greg McCoy does not give up on the play. And because he did not, he was able to fight that football away from Nick Toon, who's having a big night. He coached up on the sideline. So I'm to go up in the air and take it out. And now they come back with a running play with the freshman White. This drive started on their own five-yard line after TCU went up by eight points. Toon is back on the field. He's returned for this third down. Start getting on these long drives. You talk about fatigue. TCU used to forcing teams three and out. Again, how do they hold up here in these longer drives in this second half? Kendricks standing up on the left side of the formation. He's number 84. Oh, man, you know who that was? That was the tank, baby. Oh, that hurt up here. Hurt. <laughs> What a great call by Gary Patterson, the head coach who's in charge of this defense. The blitz comes from the outside to the right. They brought one more than Wisconsin could handle up front, and they brought the pressure, and he just lowered the boom on Scott Tolzien. I don't even think Tolzien felt Carter as he lowly came in there and got the penetration. And finally, we've had a punt in this Rose Bowl. Had one fake punt. And fair catch at the 18-yard line. TCU with the lead. They'll have the ball when you come back. TCU with the football. Ed Wesley is the running back. Horn Frogs lead it 21-13. Six and a half minutes left in quarter number three. Wesley got the edge. Wrestled out of bounds. TCU. By Butrin. TCU on that last play decided to bring Teague on the blitz. And here is Carter who comes to the inside. They have four defensive players and only three Wisconsin blockers. That's a side adjust by the quarterback. But Tolzien took his eyes to the left. He never even saw the blitz from Tank Carter. Great call again by Gary Patterson and Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator. Second and one. Read option. Oh. Dalton short of it. It'll be third down. David Gilbert read it well. It's one of the first mistakes we've seen Andy Dalton make. He's going to make the read right here as a defensive end on Gilbert. He's trying to decide, is he going to come down or is he going to stay outside? He gave the look like he was coming down to the back, which made Dalton think, I'm going to keep this and run for a first down. And then at the last moment, he jumped back out to the outside. So a poor read there by Dalton that prevented there getting the first down. Tucker and Wesley in the backfield. First down, TCU, I believe. Valai pound, pounded on him right near the first down marker. And they have moved the chains. Boy, how about the collision this time right there with Valai and Wesley? Enough to pick up the first down, but he sure earned it. That's Valai 
that's what he's known for over the years as a safety for this Patrick defense. He's a senior, and he is out of the state of Texas. Playing against TCU. See, you know, it's interesting in talking to the TCU coaches, Herbie, and consider this for a minute, folks. They thought LaMichael James, a great running back at Oregon, was coming to TCU. And then the day before, he decided... Before the snap, that, number 88 in the neutral zone, lined up. That'll be a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Consider this TCU team with a Michael James as one of the running backs. Wow. But then the day before, uh, you had to uh, commit. He decided that he would go up to Eugene, and of course the Ducks are very happy about that, and so too is LaMichael. Yeah. Having a great career. So is Ed him. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 15 on the slant. And they put it in Jeremy Curley's hands for the first down. Again, trying to isolate and get this defense in space. Look how big the opening is this time against this Wisconsin defense. It's a breakdown. This is just not good coverage by Smith and St. Jean of getting out and recognizing and reading the quarterback's eyes and getting over there. St. Jean exposed a little bit in coverage that time. A huge opening, and after another mistake on first and 15, Horn Frogs pick up a first down. Tucker and Wayman James now in that backfield. <laughs> and here they come with number 32. And that is Wayman's first carry, redshirt freshman, out of Sherman, Texas. We're starting to see the backs get their hands on the football. Wesley and Tucker and Wayman James, kind of the bowling ball of the trio. Second down and long. James stays on the field. The great All-American center, Jake Kirkpatrick. Over the ball, number 76. Another perfect snap. Let's go! Young, first down, terrific effort. The thing I love about Jimmy Young is he had 59 receptions back in 2008. He's an unselfish player. He only had 27 receptions this year as a senior, and he does not complain. He's just happy with the success of the team. A little move, a little dip to the outside. He cuts it back to the inside, maintains his balance, and then gets upfield again for another first down. And good timing between Dalton and Jimmy Young. Tucker and James check into that backfield, that pyramid look. Action Dalton incomplete down the near sideline. James the target. These receivers are getting a lot of attention when they go downfield. And TCU's had some success with their vertical pass game. And it, when they send a receiver downfield, it gets a lot of attention. Josh Boyce that time got downfield, and two or three Badger defenders were running with him, and it opened it up down the sideline there for Wesley. Hicks is one-on-one -on -one toward the top of your screen. They're going to run Curly. Second time they have used him as a running back out of that formation to the 40-yard line, and Aaron Henry makes the defensive play for the Badgers. It's a big third down for both teams. Clock starting to become an issue in this game, especially if TCU is able to keep this drive alive and get more points on the board. Needs to cross the 35 for the first down. When Dalton has time to throw, pretty effective converting on third down. They're four or five tonight. There are penalty flags galore. It's like a couple holding calls, but with them not converting, let's see what Brett Bielema decides to, to do here. Going to decline it. Bring up a fourth down. Holding number 61 on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. 
Well, you know J.J. Watt's going to be a factor. This is a matchup a lot of people wanted to see. This is where this is where Watt's really changed. Cannon gets beat, and he said, you may have gotten me that time, but I'm taking a piece of your jersey with me. Officials obviously catch that. That's a nice move. That's where J.J. Watt's taking his game to the next level. Patterson going to play a little field position. He has Kelton on the field. Hang it up in the air. And it is going to be close. If they did not cross the goal line, it's going to be down inside the five. And the officials down there are signaling that he was not stepping on the goal line. That's a beautiful play. That is some great play. Wow. Chris Gardner on the special team all over it. Well, there's a look at the DirecTV drive to the national championship. And the next time ever, you and I will see it. It'll be in Glendale. We'll be there for the BCS national championship. Auburn, Oregon on January 10th. So the Badgers again backed up. Remember their last drive started at the five yard line. This one will start at the three yard line. So in terms of field position TCU has dominated over the last couple of drives. The Badgers did get out in good fashion the last time. Ball is the running back. Play action they're going to throw on first down. Primary covered comes back the other way incomplete. Let's check in down below with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Brent, Wisconsin's offense without tight end Lance Kendricks right now. He's in the locker room getting an IV. They said he's cramping up, and there's really no word on his return. I'll let you know if we find out. Wow. That's very, very significant for Wisconsin. Losing their best threat as a receiver along with Nick Toon. That means Jacob Pedersen will have to step up and become that go-to target as a tight end. Inside of two minutes in the third quarter. They run ball. Fine looking running back here today. 119 yards he has rushed for in 18 carries. Just really impressed with TCU and, and the way these players understand Gary Patterson's defense. I mean, as soon as Wisconsin either motions or moves a tight end from one side to the other, everybody's on the same page. There's no miscommunication. They're locked in exactly to what Gary Patterson wants to do as a unit. Third and six. Ball will not get it. Fumble. Ball comes loose, but it was down. This will be fourth and short. One minute left. If you weren't with this earlier, coming out, not in this bad a field position, I should point out, but on fourth and nine, Bielman, the team, went for the fake punt. You would not expect it no. here. No. We've seen it before with Brett Bielema. Nortman with the punt. And remember who's back deep now. Jeremy Curley. There's Curley. Fair catch. Good decision by the young man on the 38-yard line. TCU starting to hand out some punishment. The recipient is the quarterback, Scott Tolzien. Welcome you back to the 97th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. TCU with the lead and the football. First and 10, final 20 seconds of quarter number three. James, and here's the option look. Short side and James comes down that sideline toward the first down spot. 
What a fine run by number 32 down that sideline. And was that Frausch, the tight end, Frosch, Irving? Yeah, Evan Frausch just does a good job on the right. Watch him sustain the block on Mike Taylor. He just sets the edge right there. You get a block by Brock, but in the inside there, Frosch really does a good job of being able to lock up with Mike Taylor and give the running back some room to get downfield. This job, nice job by Wayman James. TCU one quarter away from winning the Rose Bowl. This is the only major bowl game that TCU has never played in. And now they're closing in on a win. They're the newest members of the Hall of Fame, Brad Buddy, USC on the left, Leroy Keys, Purdue on the right, and there is Hayden Fry out of the state of Texas, and he was a legend at Iowa as their head coach, Brett Bielma, a walk-on, gave him a scholarship, then a GA, then a full-time job as a coach, and then, of course, Hayden walked off into the sunset. Looks like he rode in today with James Garner, didn't he? <laughs> so it's first down and 10 now for TCU. And here's Curley picking up the first down as Dalton put it in his hands. Let's make this Wisconsin defense continue to have to play in space. TCU is really doing a good job of mixing up their play calling. And against soft coverage, it's exactly what they want to get Curley the football. Because once he makes the catch, he's more dangerous with the football in his hands after the catch. Just like he does on punt returns and kick returns. He gets upfield in a hurry for another first down. Boy, Justin Fuente mixing up the play calling, the formations, really just keeping Wisconsin off balance on defense. You can see that they put Curley in that pyramid look in the backfield. Play is stopped before it goes. Uh, Herbie Curley has caught four passes for 40. Young, a five for 57. Boyce, one for 44. And Wesley out of the backfield, one for 33. Before the snap, false start. Number 61 on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Marcus Cannon, the left tackle. We talked about how would was how would TCU's defense hold up and would fatigue become an issue in the second half? There has not been any sign of that for Gary Patterson's group. If anything, they seem to be getting stronger on defense. If any defense is having more of an issue with fatigue, it might be Wisconsin. First and 15. A little bit behind the receiver and uh, goes incomplete on that particular play. You know, you look at Gary Patterson over there on the sideline. I mean, he works up a sweat before the ball is in the air on the opening kickoff. 50 years old, folks. He's out of Roselle, Kansas. That's a no-stop light town. <laughs> and for two decades, he was a very lowly paid assistant coach. UC Davis and Cal Lutheran were two of his stops. And then he got his opportunity at TCU. Been there 10 years, and he's done a remarkable job with this program. Second and 15. Pistol look. Option Dalton. Pitches it back to the running back Tucker. And the Badgers jump it. It's an outstanding job by J.J. Watt against a pistol right here. They're going to option him. He's going to slow play it and then eventually make the play after the pitch. It's a great job of playing the quarterback and then coming off of the quarterback and still having the speed out in space to chase down Matthew Tucker and set up this third and long for TCU. They are four of six. They've converted a couple of third and tens, but this one needs 14. Dalton's back. Steps up against the pressure, fires for it, and almost intercepted. Almost picked off by Connor O'Neill. Tremendous effort and a good job of buying enough time there by Andy Dalton. He stepped up into the pocket. And boy, what that looked like. And until his old man ended up knocking him back, I thought O'Neill had that football, but Aaron Henry <laughs> charred the ball loose. So here's Kelton on to punt again for TCU, and David Gilraith holds the Big Ten career records for kickoff returns, and he's a fine punt return man, but that a fair catch as it's hung in the air, and the Badgers just have not had good field position here in the second half. This time, they'll start from the 10. 
finish the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. We're going to be taking you down to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners arriving for their engagement with Connecticut. That'll be coming up next. Stoops, as head coach of the Sooners, won his first two BCS games, but he's been in a slump ever since. As we bring you back to the shadow of the San Gabriel, sunset closing in on one of the great scenes in American sport. They start to pound now with John Clay. Jones making the stop. So here's the issue in the fourth quarter. Who will be worn down? Right. Who survives here in the fourth quarter? We've got an eight-point game. Give TCU a lot of credit. Anson Kelton, their punter, with the lead. When they're not scoring, they're pinning Wisconsin deep in their own territory. In fact, these last three drives, they started at the 11-yard line, their own five-yard line, and their own three-yard line. So it's a challenge for Wisconsin to get back in this game. they got to drive the length of the field. Well, the Lance Kendricks is back, and that was stopped. False start. That'll cost the Badgers five yards. About a half dozen penalties against Wisconsin here today. For the snap, false start. Number 74 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. It is second down. That's John Moffitt, their outstanding left guard. Still 12 and a half minutes to go in this game. And I know Wisconsin had some success early in this game. And in the second half, they've not been able to get any rhythm going. Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator from Wisconsin, it's going to be interesting to see when does he start to get more aggressive with the play calling and when does he still rely on that running game to move the football. I think it's going to be a little bit of a balancing act for Paul Chris. TCU shows pressure. They've got Tolzien steps away from it. And then the tank unloads. Let's take a look of our Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam. And again, it's the pressure. This time, Jones is going to come from here. They bring him on the inside. They're mixing up their looks. They're creating confusion. This time, both backs weren't real sure. Clay looked at it and thought, do I have him? Also, the fullback, Ewing, wasn't sure if he had him. And because of that indecision, Jones, who's had a heck of a football game tonight, was able to get enough pressure on Tolzien to make him abort and try to pick up yards with a scramble. Ball back in as the running back. Third and ten for Wisconsin. First down. Strikes in the middle of the field to David Gilreath. Great job. Gilreath is the third down receiver in this Wisconsin offense. Perfect job of sitting in the hole of the zone defense of TCU. TCU's put so much pressure on Tolzien all night, especially on third down. That time he had time to throw, and Gilreath just sat right between the linebackers, Brock and Carter, and picked up the first down. on first down gonna go deep far sideline and it's incomplete McCoy had coverage on Gilreath the biggest challenge for Tolzien and Wisconsin getting back into this game is they really don't have the vertical pass game but when they have hurt teams this year Brett Bielema and Paul Christ and Scott Tolzien what they've tried to do is they've made you get out of position off of play action and they usually should throw intermediate passes short passes very rarely do they try to stretch the defense downfield because they don't have receivers necessarily that are built for that kind of uh, offensive philosophy time out time out Wisconsin that's their first time out of the half. We'll take a break. TCU 21, Wisconsin 13. 11 minutes remaining when you come back. ESPN College Football, the Rose Bowl game, is presented by Vizio, delivering entertainment freedom for all. And in part by Cadillac, the new standard of the world, and AT&T. The nation's fastest mobile broadband network, period. Our scene, Pasadena, California. The Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio with Kirk Herbstreet and Aaron Andrews. I'm Brett Musburger. Happy New Year, everybody.
Second down and 10 for the Badgers after the first timeout of the game. Tolzien has time incomplete. T.J. Johnson again, that time on Kendricks. Wisconsin is throwing the football so much to the middle. Something to keep in mind for Scott Tolzien, a simple little flare-out pass, but the coverage is all being squeezed into the middle. Everybody is concerned about Kendricks in tune because of the success off of play action where they like to throw the ball behind the linebackers. Paul Chris might want to think about trying to attack a little bit more on the perimeter where the coverage is much softer. Third and ten. Tolzien deflected incomplete. Badgers forced to punt after Wayne Daniels deflects the forward pass. You know Wayne Daniels was fired up coming into this game and he has done a good job this year stepping up for Jerry Hughes. Now he didn't necessarily rush the passer. He just was kind of a spy watching Scott Tolzien being a great athlete gets up into the air and knocks that football down. Nortman to punt. Curly Fair catches it at the 30-yard line. 10.44 to go in the Rose Bowl. TCU with the lead and the football when you come back. We're going to take a look at today's Taco Bell touchdown spotlight. TCU fell behind 3-0 on the Badgers' opening drive. This was their first drive, Herbert. And they, kept, was, they caught Wisconsin napping, Curley going to the tunnel screen. And Bart Johnson gets right behind Aaron Henry for a touchdown, a double move, and it really set the tempo for Andy Dalton. Dalton, sort of a busted play. Tucker is his running back. Wesley has come off with an injury and they have kept his helmet away from him down on the sideline and we'll keep an eye as to whether or not he returns here into that backfield but there is Wesley he wanted to go back on the field after he was shaken up second down and 13 empty backfield TCU spreads the field Slip screen, Curly to the 32-yard line, and this will be third down and long. If you're a TCU fan, you're up by eight. You're looking at the clock now, under 10 minutes. You're in the Rose Bowl. There's been so much talk about TCU wanting to prove to the world that they belong in this kind of game. Andy Dalton is the key here in the final nine and a half minutes to go. Continue to manage this game, make good decisions, put his offense in a position. If it's not there, throw it away and punt the football. He's got to continue to manage the football game. James is the running back alongside Dalton. Fires for the first down and moves the chains. Andy Dalton, the senior quarterback, just an outstanding young man and Herbie, a pretty good thrower. How about J.J. Watt moves from the outside to the inside, and because of Dalton's quick decision, he's able to get rid of the football and be able to, again, find a receiver that's not getting tested at all off the line of scrimmage. Curley and Young both are able to get off the line of scrimmage, get into that soft spot of that zone, and sit down, and Dalton just throws it very simply for the first down. And it's still Tucker. It's the pistol. Tucker sort of tiptoed into the middle. Second down coming up. No turnovers tonight so far for TCU. That, again, that goes back to Andy Dalton, the decision-making, managing the game, being in control. Who else would you want? Maybe outside of Kellen Moore or Andrew Luck and all of college football. And Andy Dalton, 41-7 and seven as a starting quarterback. Second and seven. Dalton. Complete and out of bounds. Hicks. Start looking at these third down opportunities 
for, for TCU's offense and Wisconsin's defense with the eight-point lead. It's not just trying to get a first down. It's getting a new set of downs. It's affecting field position. It's affecting the clock. All these things. Every time Brett Bielema's defense allows TCU to get a first down late in this game, it's a big-time loss for Wisconsin because of that clock and because of the field position. Dalton deflected incomplete. Great play by Nzegwu. Nzegwu makes the play defensively, and the punt team is on the field again for TCU. And if Nzegwu doesn't make this play, look at the coverage, how soft it is on third down. Nzegwu jumps up as a defensive end, but if he does not do that, Boyce is able to come through on that quick slant and pick up another first down. Wisconsin catches a break because of Nzegwu's athletic ability to get up and knock that ball down. Gilreath. Bad snap. Tracked down by Kelton. Gilreath will find nothing to the 23-yard line. And again, the coverage team by TCU. Seven and a half minutes. Badger football when you come back to the Rose Bowl. Farmers Insurance brings you aerial coverage of the Rose Bowl game and coverage for your auto home, life, and business. Thanks for being along with us on this special Rose Bowl occasion. Non-automatic qualifier TCU shows up and they lead the co-champion of the Big Ten. Best starting field position this half. Right now, 23-yard line. Wisconsin three possessions this half and three punts. John Clay is the running back. Clay. For a fine first down and 14 yards before McCoy can wrestle him down. John Moffitt leads the way. The big left guard coming around to be able to pick up a block and get into that traffic. And Clay showing again, very nimble on his feet for a guy that's 255 pounds. If he didn't run into his, running, his wide receiver, Nick Toon, I think the big fella may still be running. Clay again. Bust free. Brought down close to the 30-yard line. T.J. Johnson comes with Clay. It's a counter play. The Kendricks this time comes in motion, and then he comes back, picks up a great block off the defensive end, and John Clay running very determined here in a must-scoring, must a drive that is obviously in a must-scoring mode for Wisconsin. Not quite the speed to pull it away, but definitely showing some pretty good acceleration to the big fella. 30 more rushing yards, and now Ball checks in. Timeout. Tolzien just used their second timeout of this half. Wisconsin, that's their second timeout of the half. And that leaves them with only one now. When you come back, six and a half minutes. It's a one possession game. 21 13. TCU. Six and a half minutes left in the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio and Wisconsin mounting its best drive of the second half. They have come with the hammer. Big John Clay and his first two plays of this drive for 14 and 30 yards. Now they go back to ball. Toss play to ball. Nothing doing. Jammed up. Daniels is there defensively, number 96. Interesting that Paul Chris continuing to rely on the strength. This time, T.J. Johnson said enough of those last two plays. He forces the play back to the inside. How many times has Gary Patterson used a term this week with us? Leverage. This is leverage. Forcing a back back to where his defenders are. Don't let him get to the outside where he has room to run. Make him go back to where those black jerseys are. Good job that time by T.J. Johnson. Second down, Badgers keep it on the ground. Hammer with ball to the 30-yard line. This will bring up a third and long, let's call it. Let's call it about seven yards they're going to need here. 
comes down now to Scott Tolstein. The offensive line, the last few third downs, have not done a good enough job of giving him time to throw. You've got to think Gary Patterson will get pretty creative here on his third down, try to get pressure, try to get to the face. And let's see if Tolzien can either find Nick Toon, number one, or Lance Kendricks, isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Tank Carter is picked up on the blitz, and it is complete first down. And they get it in Kendricks' hands, and there's a penalty flag late. Thrown around the 18-yard line. Thing it looked like could have been was possibly a block in the back as Kendricks was being tackled. There was no foul on the play, no block in the back. Well, right at the end, it happened right in front of Gary Patterson. He was very adamant, pointing backwards, thinking that it was a block in the back. Good job here on third down. They gave him just enough time. He finds Kendricks. Now watch Kendricks break the play here. And then right at the end of the play, Gilreed just gives a little bit of a push there and trying to be able to make the play. And they must have determined that maybe Kendricks was on his way down or down before Gilreed blocked Jones in the back. Badger's first pass of the drive. Play back on the field. And a big first down run for the Badgers. This is a huge factor, Brent, and this is a huge factor. Closing in on four minutes, one timeout because Tolzien's been forced to use two of his timeouts. Taking their time, still running the football. And that's great if they're able to score a touchdown and go for two and tie the game up. Second and five. Again, Clay. First down, no. Very close. Boy, this is a great effort by John Clay. A lot of people wondered how much would John Clay play tonight? The way Monty Ball and James White finished those last four games? Would the Dope Walker finalists get an opportunity to play tonight? And it's the first time we've seen the Wisconsin offense come alive in the second half. And it's because of John Clay and this offensive line helping the Badgers get down the field. Third and one. I saw a look with the formation. Clay follows the fullback for a first and goal. 3.15 and counting. Need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They've been running the football so well. It gets so much tougher inside the 10-yard line against TCU's defense. Scott Tolstein is lethal in this area with the play-action pass. Now, they might just keep pushing because they might feel like they're wearing down this defensive line. But Lance Kendricks, in this situation on play-action, a lot of times is able to get behind coverage for touchdowns off of that look. Play across the five, second and goal. The way this clock continues to move with Wisconsin down to one timeout. Got to get into the end zone, obviously. Got to get the two-pointer. Try to get it to overtime. And if you if they do score and they don't get the two-pointer, basically it's going to come down to an onside kick. They're taking their time, working the clock, not to give Andy Dalton too much time if they do put this ball in the end zone. Football. Tries to get the edge, dies for the end zone, touchdown. Two points away from a tie. John Clay does most of the work, but Monty Ball again, pretty versatile back, has 
quickness, but also enough power that time to get through the arm tackles. And that is only the second 10-play scoring drive that TCU's defense has allowed the entire season. Three yards away from a tie. Ball stays on the field. Deflected. And the onside kick is the only hope for the Badgers. Tank Carter makes the play defensively. It's the play of the game. How fitting for Carter, who's had a great season for this Horn Frog defense and a great game to read the play, realize they're going underneath, jump up, and knock that ball down. Clinging to a lead at the Rose Bowl, trying to make history. I'm Houston Rogers. Here's what's happening on SportsCenter right now. The Gators send Urban Meyer out a winner. Florida defeats Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittley Lions 37-24 in the Outback Bowl. It's Meyer's final game. Last month, he announced he was stepping down as head coach. And the University of Pittsburgh has fired head football coach Mike Haywood. This is the day after he was arrested on a domestic violence charge. Now back to the Rose Bowl. Welcome back. It's one of the most important onside kicks in the history of the Rose Bowl. It is 21-19, full two minutes to go. It'll be up to the Badgers to try and recover this ball or jar it loose after it travels 10 yards. The TCU players can move up. They can down it after it is kicked. And a very superstitious head coach is hanging on by a shoelace. Here we go. Up in the air. Caught in the air and down by Bart Johnson. TCU football. Wisconsin with one timeout left. 159. And the Horn Frogs are near victory. You got your, one of your hands team. You got one of your best receivers. Ball is kicked right to him. Secures that football and possibly secures the victory for TCU. Matthew Tucker, and there is the man who stopped the two-point conversion. Tank Carter. Ball security. It'll be second down and ten. Brent, let's go back to the two-pointer because watch Jacob Pedersen, the, the tight end, who's right here uncovered, and watch Tank Carter get his hand up and knock that ball down. If he does not make that play, or if Tolzien's able to try to dump it up and over Carter, it's probably a tie game. But great instincts by Tank Carter to go up into the air and knock that ball down because Jacob Pedersen, the tight end, nobody picked him up. He was all alone. So the Badgers have used their final timeout. And we'll have a minute 54 going. Just imagine the emotions of, of Gary Patterson, the TCU players, and all of their fans. I mean, this is for little guys everywhere. Non-automatic qualifier. They had to come the hard way. Unbeaten during the regular season. And here they are, closing in. And let's not forget that a lot of people thought at the end of the year, Wisconsin and that offense, if there was a playoff, that might be the team that would win a playoff. So they came into this Rose Bowl with a ton of momentum. One of the hottest teams in college football. And TCU and Gary Patterson had this team incredibly well prepared. Came started out with 24 points in the first quarter. But it settled down and became more of a defensive struggle. There's a handoff. They squirt through on the right side. Let us not forget way back. The one thing about going way back in a football game, you never know what would have happened afterwards if something had changed. But the Badgers did miss this field goal. It was a 39-yarder pulled to the left. 
Yeah. And right now, one of the differences in, in this game is that missed field goal with TCU leading it by two. And also, mismanagement of the clock at the end of the first half, where they ended up settling for a field goal, but maybe could have had a touchdown. With all that said, third and four with still a minute and 12 to go. Here's James. First down, and TCU is going to win the Rose Bowl. The victory formation is coming up. <laughs> For the little guys everywhere. For Gary Patterson and the Frogs, they had an edge to them in their preparation. They're clearing an idiot off the field right now. The umpire in his final game has just run him off. And now they'll get a little more security out onto the field. One minute remaining. And what a story this is for this school of 9,000 down in Fort Worth, Texas. It's a private school, outstanding school of business. And if you're interested in TCU, the annual cost, including housing, books, and fees, $41,100. That's a bargain, folks. <laughs> yeah. If you like to go to a school with a good football team, it's a place to go. About 9,000 students, I think, down there. It'll be a wonderful place. Brett, how much will this win, you think, affect the long-term discussions in the future about the BCS and a non-automatic qualifier, whether they belong or whether they don't, there's so many people that would just kind of dismiss TCU or Boise State. You wonder if a, a win like this could change the climate in the future, even though TCU goes off to the Big East, of the little guy having a chance to play in the big game. It's one game on one night. Teams like this can play with anybody. No, don't do that. This game's not over. He said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you guys? Don't you know? We play to the end. <laughs> you see what they said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love that. Yes, sir, coach. It's the best part of the night. Yes, sir. Oh, he's, he's done such a great job down there. Big smile. And why not? There it is. Andy Dalton and TCU win the Rose Bowl. One for the ages. A failed two-point conversion is all that kept us from going to overtime. And there's the offensive hero of the game, Andy Dalton. And, of course, Tank Carter, the linebacker, the young man who broke his back in an automobile accident, took up football late and came in and made the play of his life. At the age of 10, he was a BMC champion, and now today he's a Rose Bowl champion. Let's go down. I said at the press conference, what I said, I said, we won it. Well, we, I don't just know. Won, we just won the Rose Bowl. Yes, you did. <laughs> hey, there's been so much talk about if the little guys could hang with the big guys. You're getting very emotional now. What do you uh, say to all those little guys? I mean, I, I mean, this is for everybody. I got texts from Boise State today. I got texts from all across the country. Go win this with Russ. I won it for TCU first, but uh, that's a good Wisconsin team. You've got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, we just are able to hold on to Aaron. I can't tell you how much I love my guys. I mean, it's, I mean, coach and head coaches get all the credit. The bottom line is the players get it done. You know what you can tell me? Tell me what your emotions were when you saw the deflection and they were trying to go for two points to tie this thing up. Well, yeah, because we didn't have a safety cover the number three guy. We knocked it down, so it was wide open. So it's, uh, it was, oh, my goodness. And then, yes. We just not have won the Rose Bowl. And finally, I have to ask you about Andy Dalton. You were worried he was going to put the weight on the world, try to come back from what happened last year in the Fiesta Bowl. Put his performance in perspective. Well, I can. He just won 44 ball games as a starter. I can't say enough about Andy Dalton and the rest of this football team. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's been my life here for 13 years. I started with nothing, and now we have everything. Gary, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Over now, 
And that great speed, they were able to catch him. <laughs> and he got the best. And let's go down to Aaron with the quarterback of the day, Andy Dalton. And he just said, wow. Well, Andy, the first non-AQ to not only play in the Rose Bowl, but to win it. How does that sound? It sounds amazing. It's something that we worked so hard for. And you can see all the hard work pay off. And to play in an outstanding game in the Rose Bowl against a great opponent in Wisconsin, we're thrilled and we're happy with the victory. You guys said all the right things this week when people asked you, are you playing for the little guys out there? What do you say to that now? You know, that's what we were doing. We weren't just playing for TCU. We were playing for all the non-AQ schools out there. And it's the attitude that we have. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, in 1 Peter 5, 6, it says, humble yourself and under God's mighty hand, he'll exalt you in due time. And that's what happened today. I have to ask you about your defense's performance. They really put Wisconsin out of rhythm in the second half. What did you see? You know, they played outstanding. They made a few adjustments early on. They were running the ball pretty well on them. And, uh, you know, we fought hard. We, all we had to do was win by one point, and we won by two, so I'll take it. And what was working for you tonight? You know, we had a lot of things. They, they were lining up and playing. We had a good game plan coming in, so we executed well and got a big win. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Well, Aaron, this was the play of the day. Tank Carter, that BMX youngster who turned to football. And as Herbie told you, watch number 48 turn wide open. Nobody on him, as Coach Patterson pointed out. And Carter simply swats it away. Just one of those plays that you'll remember forever out of Rose Bowl lore. Just great to see Gary Patterson finally let go. But that was a heck of a play by Tank Carter. And let's go down to Aaron. We just made him come off the stage really quick. First of all, take us through the play of the game, the deflection. Oh, uh, well, it just, that's just the way it happened. They came out, and uh, we knew we had to stop them so we could win the game. They only need two points. And uh, I went to go blitz, and I just stepped back, and I seen him cock his hand back, so I jumped up and swatted it away. What was the emotion like when all your teammates and your coach came up to you? Oh, uh, there's nothing. I can't even explain it. It feels so good to be out here at the Rose Bowl and get this win for TCU and the program. Definitely bring it back to Fort Worth, the win and everything. It just feels amazing. And what about for you? You've been through so much adversity in your life. At one point, through a car accident, you didn't even know if you'd ever walk again. So put that into perspective. Oh, uh, I just took it one day at a time. You know, the all that really just back in the day, uh, I just need to do what I need to do and play with the team. And we all played as a group, and that's the way it went down. And today we came out with a win, and it feels good. Go up there and get your trophy. Congratulations. Brent, back uh, up to you. Aaron, thank you very much. And they are ready to present the trophy. Let's go down to Chris Fowler. Chris. Brent, thank you very much. You're an ecstatic bunch of guys in purple and black here. A soaking wet head coach about to clutch the Rose Bowl trophy. And to make the presentation, the president of the Tournament of Roses, Mr. Jeff Drew. Jeff. Coach Patterson, on behalf of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses, I want to congratulate you on being 2011 Rose Bowl champions. Gary, pass it off to your quarterback and explain what capping a perfect season with a Rose Bowl victory over Wisconsin means to your team. Well, I don't know if you can put it into words. Well, first off, I want to thank everybody that came here from TCU land. Second, what can you say about the quarterback in a senior class who just won 44 ball games in their career? I think that says it all. Uh, I love them. They're special. And they found a way to, get, way to win again today. You knew Wisconsin had a powerful running game. The times today, they pushed you around, but you were able to make a stand just enough. Take us through that final play, the two-point conversion, when they're three yards away from perhaps forcing overtime. Well, uh, you know what? We actually had a blitz call, and uh, I actually said to the offensive staff before that, get your thoughts together. You're going to go down and score. We can't stop them here. And uh, we came up with a great tip and, uh, and found a way to conserve the way up. And, I mean, it's like your life passes before your eyes. It's, you can't even really say what you think about. Gary, you've been saying that you've been playing for a bigger cause, not just for TCU, but for all the, quote, little guys, the outsiders in college football. What does this say about where we are in this sport at this time? Well, I've been saying for a while that apparently college football's hit. You know, I got texts from everybody across the nation, from Boise State, from schools all over, wishing us good luck and saying we were playing for them. And today we play for us and we play for everybody else out there that wanted a chance. So here we go. It's been a long building process. This is the pinnacle. You see these guys behind you. 
confetti in the air in Pasadena. Can you believe it? No, I can't. Uh, I'll probably have to go home and lay down and probably wait till I get back to Fort Worth before I'll be able to say, we just won the Rose Bowl. Gary Patterson losing his voice, but his team didn't lose a game all season long. Congratulations, the Horned Frogs, champs of the Rose Bowl. Let's meet the players of the game, the offensive player of the game, the quarterback for the Horn Frogs is Andy Dalton. Andy, you cap off a brilliant career. All those wins as a starter. I know you wanted to play better tonight than the bowl last season. What would make the difference for you? You know, we knew we had to come out and execute well, and uh, we did that early on. We started fast, and, uh, you know, it was just it helped us get the big win. You guys didn't have a usual dominant ground game. You really had to make a lot of passes tonight, a lot of key plays with the passing game. And we had a lot of players make big plays. You know, the offensive line did an outstanding job. Guys making big plays on thirds downs. And so, you know, that's what we had to do. Not many people come to TCU and dream about an undefeated season and a Rose Bowl. Put this into perspective from the player side of things. You know, we knew we had a shot. We felt like we had a great class coming in and with a lot of good players, but it's a dream come true. It's what we set out to do, and the hard work's paid off. The guy next to you, Tank Carter, who's the defensive MVP, we'll talk to him in a second. He batted down the two-point conversion. What was your reaction from the sideline watching that play? You know, we, we knew there was still some time on the, on the clock, so we had to go out and get the first down. But, uh, you know, it was a heck of a play, and he did an outstanding job. Andy, that trophy is yours. Congratulations. The offensive MVP, Andy Dalton of TCU. <laughs> Let's slide around, talk to Tank Carter here. Linebacker, you were in the, the backfield, a couple of sacks, but the most important player of your career, reaching out, batting down the pass. Did you know the guy was wide open if you didn't make that play? No, I had no idea. I was coming in on blitz, and... Uh, he stopped me and blocked me a little bit, so I seen him cock his arm back, and I just jumped up and swatted away. So it was in the right place at the right time, and it feels great. The challenge you're facing, this big, powerful offensive line, they thought they could wear you down to the fourth quarter. They almost did. You guys had just enough left. Yeah, they almost did, but uh, we pulled it out at the end. Uh, it feel like, seems like we got a little bit better towards the end of the game, and uh, TCU pulled it out. So go Frogs. Take part in defensive MVP. Andy Dalton, offensive MVP, as TCU caps a perfect season by winning the Rose Bowl. Right back up to you. Chris, thank you very much. Just a class performance. And following this game, we will go down to Arizona for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And there you see the two fine head coaches, Herbie. Yeah, Oklahoma and Bob Stoops. They've lost five straight BCS Bowl games. Heavily favored over UConn. Will they show up motivated and excited, I think, is a big key. Yeah, Randy Etzel has done a great job. He'll bring the hammer in that game. He's got a real good running attack. But Oklahoma was something to prove in this game because they've lost their last five BCS games. Yeah, I think told, uh, Jordan Todman will be a big factor. But I really think for UConn to compete, their quarterback, Zach Frazier, will be the key. Because I think Oklahoma's going to put everything on Todman to stop him because he's so explosive and see if Zach Frazier has what it takes to be able to move the football. I think Oklahoma, if they show up mentally, they should be okay. And meanwhile, we have had a fabulous Rose Bowl. One of the things, Herbie, that really has struck me about TCU at no point, at no point during this buildup, did this team ever lobby no. or say that we should be playing for the national championship. To a man, they said, we are delighted to be going to the Rose Bowl. We look forward to playing Wisconsin, and then we will like the polls take it from there. They, they, they're a class program led by a class coach with a class quarterback in Andy Dalton. They deserved everything that they were able to achieve tonight. And I tell you, they were tested. It was 14 to 10 early. Both these offenses looked like it was going to be one of the highest scoring Rose Bowls we've had in years. Adjustments were made, and as Tank Carter said, we kind of settled down. And in the second half, outside of that long, the long drive at the end of the game by Wisconsin, the Badgers really couldn't do anything offensively because of Carter and, and that defense. And the way the game turned around, it is so fitting that it came down to one final defensive play by Tank Kerr. And now the Rose Bowl trophy will head back to Fort Worth, Texas. The Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio and the Horn Frogs of TCU are the winners over Wisconsin.